All right, let's go ahead and do a final signal operations example, get just a little bit more practice in working with these combined signal operations. So the signal that we're gonna work with in this example is the signal X of T, and X of T looks like this. So it's kind of a rectangle, 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 signals all kind of stacked together. And what we're going to do in this example is we are going to sketch the signal Y of T equals X of minus T over two, minus four. So there's a lot going on right here. We know there's some type of shift going on. Because it's minus t, we know there's some type of time reversal going on. This factor right here says there's a scale factor applied, so there's some type of compression or expansion going on. So this one has all three of our operations in it. Again, we'll break it down into two different approaches. There's different ways to do this. In approach one, I'm going to start off with x of t, and I'm going to go ahead and get the minus four in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do a time shift first. When you do a time shift, you replace t with t minus something. So that's exactly what I've done. I replaced t with t minus 4, because I want that minus 4 right there. So that's our time shift. t minus 4 means shift 4 units to the right. After I do the time shift, then what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and do the reversal and an expansion. When you flip, you replace t with minus t. So that's what I've done from here to here. I replaced t with minus t. And with an expansion, you replace t with a t. So in this case, the a was 0.5 or 1 half, so I've replaced t with a t. So when you combine those, what I'm really doing is replacing t with minus t over 2. So I've done kind of a combined flip and expand. This is indeed what I want to get to. So these two operations, a time shift of 4 units to the right, followed by a flip on the time axis and an expansion of fact by a factor of 2, gives me the signal I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I want to do is time shift my signal. So I'm going to take all the values on the time axis here and add three to them. So minus one, I'm sorry, add four to them because it's a time shift of four. So minus one plus four is three. Two plus four is six. So that's what I get after my time shift. Now what do I need to do? So that's x of t minus four. I need to go ahead and flip and expand. So when I flip it, the 3 is going to turn into a minus 3, 4 turns into minus 4, 6 turns into minus 6, but then I go ahead and multiply by 2 because it's an expansion. So I can just kind of make a list of how these points are going to map to the time reversed and expanded axis. I multiply by negative 2. So 6 turns into minus 12, 5 turns into minus 10, 4 turns into minus 8, 3 turns into minus 6. So that kind of gives me some reference points when I sketch this new time axis. What used to happen at 3 now happens at minus 6. What used to happen at 6 now happens at minus 12. So if I use that, I can get my new signal. And this is what it looks like. So this is the final signal, x of minus t over 2 minus 4. So that's what I was looking for. What's another way to do this? Another way to do this is change these order of operations. I can still get to what I want, I just have to be a little bit careful about how I do it. So if I wanted to, I could have started off the problem x of t and gone ahead and done the reversal and expansion. So I would I replaced t with minus t over 2. And I could go ahead and sketch that signal. After I do the reverse or the time reversal and expansion, then I need to go ahead and get this shift in here. And here's where I need to be careful. So that was flip and expand. So when I do my time shift, time shift means take t and replace t with t plus something or t minus something. So I went ahead and wrote a parenthesis here to indicate I'm replacing the entire t quantity with this new quantity. When I'm done, if I was to multiply all this out, I need it to look like this. I need it to be minus t over 2 minus 4. So I think and ask myself, what do I put right here? So if I was to multiply out that negative sign and divide by 2, I end up with a minus 4. So what you need to put there is plus 8. If I distribute this, I get minus t over 2 and then minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. So to get the time shift that I want in this problem, to get to the final signal that I want, the time shift is completely different. In approach 1, we actually did a time shift of 4. In this one, because the order of operations is different, the amount of shift I need to put in is different. It's a shift of 8 to the left. So it's not only a different amount, it's in a completely different direction as well. And it's in the completely different direction because I already did a time flip. 
our time reversal. So we're not going to sketch these in approach two. Just wanted to talk through how you would do these in this different order and the care you would take to make sure you end up with the final signal that you want. And most of the time, it's just good to go ahead and kind of put these parentheses in there and leave a blank spot and ask yourself, what do I need to put there if I need it to look like this when I'm done? That's really the best way to think through it. Obviously, when you're done sketching these individual signals, you better end up with a signal that looks exactly like that. It's just a different way to do it.